Today we're going to be taking a look at a watch that could be the new one watch collection go-to, the Seiko SPB143. This watch is the Seiko Diver I've always longed for. No disrespect to the legendary SKX007, but the smaller 40-ish millimeter case and 20 millimeter lug width make a watch that is much easier to wear and more versatile. Now I'm not a stickler for 20 millimeter lug widths as I'm fine with purchasing non 20 millimeter watch straps, but there's something about the magic two to one ratio between lug width and case diameter that is pleasing to the eye. The case is a tad thick at 13.2 millimeters. The side profile is very reminiscent of a thinner SKX007, which isn't a bad thing. While the SPB143 makes use of the tried and true dive watch recipe using a black bezel and steel sports case, it maintains its own unique identity as it is instantly recognizable as a Seiko as soon as you pick it up. The watch uses a flat coin edge bezel that is easy to grab and use. And while the bezel is easy to use, it doesn't sit flush with the case. Since it doesn't taper, as a result, it does feel slightly top heavy. While the watch doesn't lay as flat as I would like, rest assured it will still slide underneath a cuff. Along with the coin edge bezel, the oversized crown is a joy to use. The larger size makes it easier to interface with, whether it's unscrewing the crown, winding, or setting the date and time. In the world of black dial sports watches, the gray sunburst dial is a breath of fresh air. It maintains the versatile, monochromatic aesthetic that I think most look for in a one watch collection, yet remains interesting as the dial dances with the light. The gray dial reveals warm undertones and in the right light can take on a taupe-like color. The faint warm glow adds some of that vintage warmth we've grown to know and love without the use of faux patina. In addition, another unique attribute of this watch is the black steel bezel. While the eye may be drawn to the dial at first, the brushing on the bezel slowly comes into focus as it catches the light. It's subtle, but collectively with the dial creates a watch that makes you want to take a moment and go in for a closer look. Personally, I normally prefer time-only watches as I like the symmetry of a time-only dial, but Seiko's implementation of the date window is perfect such that at times I forget it's there. The white date wheel does a good job of mirroring the 9 o'clock indice in a way that feels balanced and symmetrical. I also must admit it's been nice having the date on a watch again, whether it's writing checks or signing contracts. I'd forgotten how seamless it was to simply check your wrist as you sign important documents. Finally, let's talk about the only point of contention for this watch, the price. At 1200 US, it's not cheap. Seiko has always been the affordable brand that could swing well above its weight and give its European rivals a run for their money. While a four digit Seiko might sound foreign, I do think that the price is fair. Compared to the SKX007, you're getting better materials, case finishing, and movement. The SPB143 uses Seiko's 6R35 movement, which has both hacking and hand winding, a 70 hour power reserve, and beats at a rate of three hertz. At this price, I think the only letdown is the bracelet. The bracelet uses Seiko's cheaper pin and collar design to stitch the links together. Sure, you only have to resize your bracelet once, but screw down pins are a level of refinement one would expect at this price point. Now the big question is, how does this compare to my current go-to one watch collection watch, the five digits of Mariner? If you wear the watches back to back, you'll notice that the Rolex is thinner and wears flatter. If I had to split hairs, the Rolex probably still holds the edge in versatility, as I think its flatter design dresses up better. The Samariner has long been the bar that most other dive watches aspire to, so much so that most divers lose their identity as they try to mimic the Oyster case and handset. Unlike other watches of a similar size and aesthetic, the SBB143 feels unique with its origins firmly rooted in the vintage 62 MAS. This watch does everything you would ever need a one watch collection to do, it pairs well with a good pair of denim, can accompany you on your dive to the depths of a dish filled sink, and still be flexible enough to be thrown underneath the shirt cuff to take that all important zoom meeting. If the Seiko SPB143 would have existed back when Submariners were still somewhat attainable, I'm not sure if I would have the Submariner today. If we fast forward to today's market, at the current rate the vintage Submariners are trading for, it's a no-brainer. I would pick the Seiko SPB143 every time as my go-to one watch collection. I hope you enjoyed this look at the Seiko SPB143. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.